keep having this dream. A Comanche war party searches the house. It's only a matter of time before they haul me up into the light where their knives gleam. He's gone. Hi, welcome to What the Flick. I am Christy. This is Alonzo. That is Ben. These guys saw a movie that's playing on HBO called All the Way, which I did not see because I do not have HBO. We pulled the plug. I'll have you know. You but you could, you could get HBO now. I know. Now. I have I have Roku. I have Netflix. Whatever. I, I just I did not watch this. But these guys did. Apparently, Brian Cranston is LBJ. Will you tell us about it, please? Oh yeah, sure. Well, this is uh, this this movie begins uh, with just the audio. Uh, hearing crowd cheering and then screaming of uh, President Kennedy's assassination, November 22nd, 1963, and really picks up in the days and weeks afterwards as LBJ addresses Congress and then sets about working with and against, at times, Martin Luther King and others in the civil, right move, civil rights movement, but mainly Dr. King, played by Anthony Mackie, to continue... LBJ to continue JFK's agenda and first and foremost get the Civil Rights Act through Congress. That's the the meat of this story and the pressure he faces from Southern Democrats who have always been loyal, of course, to the Democratic Party and but are not interested in, in the Civil Rights Bill. And LBJ, who himself for years and years, most of his political career was somewhat hostile to civil rights or at least went along with that crowd. Changing his nature and, uh, and, 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 and defying expectations and, and getting this bill passed and all the external pressures from uh, Bradley Whitford plays Hubert Humphrey representing the Northern Liberals to Mackey as King to uh, Stephen Root as uh, J. Edgar Hoover and Melissa Leo very effectively as sort of uh, a steadying force on, on LBJ as uh, Lady Bird Johnson. What are you fighting for, darling? In your heart. That's what the people need to hear. I urge you to enact President Kennedy's civil rights bill into law. It ain't gonna be easy, Dr. King. This president is gonna have to deliver, and we're gonna hold his feet to the fire till he does. We in the Senate intend to filibuster this bill. If you get in my way, I'll crush you. This civil rights bill just killed your election chances. If the government does not do what is right, nonviolence will no longer be an option. Is that a threat? Out of the car, boys. Everybody wants power. They think it ought to be given out, free of charge, like Mardi Gras beans. Nothing comes free. Nothing. You think every Southerner is going to start dancing to your tune? All we're asking is to live as decent human beings. I'm trying to turn this country around and prevent a major war. My people want results. Stand up! Stand up! It's time to act. To step down now would be wrong for your country. Nobody's surrendering. We're making history here. And you have to decide how you want history to remember you. Yeah, this uh, Dave tweeted that we were playing character actor bingo every three no. minutes. It was <laughs> like I, the supporting cast in this is amazing. Like Frank I, Langella right, plays. I didn't mention Frank Langella was, was Richard Russell, right, uh, senator from Georgia, who sort of led the Dixiecrats, even though he had much more of a conscience than, yes. than the rest. And of was but, close but, friends with LBJ was close, for a long time, right? And was sort of very. They called him Uncle Dick. Was yeah. his father figure at LBJ? And I, as I say, I had a much better conscience about it, but still. Did not want to pass the Civil Rights Act. Yeah. I, now, okay, I, you're you're a much more of a world traveler than me. Did you see uh, Cranston do this on stage? I did not. No, I got told to by every single person who, <laughs> who saw it. Um, he's quite good. He's amazing. amazing. I, it, it's, there's that thing when you're watching any biopic, but especially when you're watching one familiar face play another familiar face, where either they disappear into it or they don't, and. You have to really look for Brian Cranston totally, in there. Yeah. He just becomes LBJ. Just the the way the, the the one that you know from from photographs and news footage or whatever. Um, yeah, so I thought that was really uh, incredible. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are going to talk about this movie in in terms of Selma uh, because one of the complaints that some people had about Selma was the way that it portrayed LBJ's 
role in the whole, you know, the Voting Rights Act and that kind of thing. And I don't think that this movie is letting him off the hook in any way. I think it's it it is it's more about the political pressures and the maneuvering required to go from this to this to this. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't I don't think the movie is 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 letting LBJ off the hook, but it is acknowledging, look, I can get this pass, and then I can get this pass, and then I can get this pass, and he sort of, you know, the way he operated it, whether or not that was, and then, and then you've got King dealing with, you know, the various voices that are going on in the in the Black Civil Rights Movement. They were certainly all on the same page. Stokely Carmichael wanted, you know, bigger, faster, you know, louder, and and then you had other people who were who were sort of wanting restraint. Um, yeah, there was a. It's it's it, it's good. To, I took a one of the best courses I took at uh, at Tufts University. I can't believe I went to Tufts. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, was a history of the civil rights movement, and there was significant pressure to the left of King, and not like we think of that as just Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. But prior to Malcolm X's ascendance, uh, there were people. You know, I mean, in a sense that in in this to look at it in today's Democratic Party, Dr. King was in many ways Hillary. And and you know and Stokely Carmichael and Bob Moses were Bernie. They, mm -hmm. they were like, no, now, now, yeah. now, now. And King recognized the need. And I'm not making any advocacy here. It's just interesting to see it in those terms. Sure. King being the pragmatist, uh, just in that context, and recognizing not trusting LBJ ever, but recognizing that there was an opportunity to work with him. I think what to what you're saying about the way Cranston, the you know, get from here to here to here. It doesn't let him off the hook. He did a great thing. He passed the Civil Rights Act. They gutted the voting rights from the Civil Rights Act, still an incredibly meaningful bill, and then passed voting rights the next year. The, this movie does not take that. It is just no. leading up to the election in 1964 and his defeat of Goldwater. But but the um, you see full, there, there are so many layers to LBJ. He's really one of the most fascinating figures in modern political history. This movie's like Lincoln in that it takes this sort of this one chunk of the guy's life right. that really gives you a fuller picture of it. Right, that's what, and that I think we've, we've discussed it many times that, that, that while there can be fully ex, uh, biopics that cover the expanse of somebody's life that are quite good, uh, the ones where we get nine months or 18 months are, are often better. Yeah. Um, but you see, like LBJ is both monstrous in this and wonderful mm -hmm. and charming and despicable and, and, <laughs> despicable and you know, and, and brusque and then other. You know, it's just, I mean, he's got a line to, to Frank Langella, who, you know, we love in the Americans. Man, that guy can, that guy's good, good at his job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, where he says it's, this is not personal, it's just politics. So while that's a uh, kind of a, a, that's a cliched line, it, it has, it has significance here because it, this look at the passing of the civil rights movement is totally different than Selma because it is, it's just the politics of it. Yeah. Right. How do you get this done? And keep the party together, and manage to be reelected when you know you're giving up this reliable block of Democratic votes in the South. And as LBJ says, it's a great moment. Hubert Humphrey comes out after he signs the bill, and he goes, "Mr. President, a historic moment. You should be so proud." And he says, LBJ says, "The Democratic Party just lost the South for my lifetime, probably <laughs> yours. What are you so fucking happy about?" <laughs> How is Anthony Mackey in this? I thought very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, the and there's a lot of Hoover's obsession with King, and particularly King's, you know, extramarital affairs. Um, I thought Hoover was a little diminished in it. Like he seemed subservient to Johnson. Like they kept saying they're afraid of him, but then Johnson owned him in all their meetings. Mm. Yeah, Who that's, plays that's him? Right. Stephen Root. He's very good in that moment. I'm just not sure. It didn't feel like Hoover. It felt. Like, That's true. You yeah. get the impression of, of, of presidents being more threatened by, by Hoover, Hoover than, yeah. than, than they were. Like, it would have been interesting to see Hoover's recordings of Johnson. I was going to say, yeah, I'm yeah. sure he had some of them. No, Mackey's very good. He, it's, it, it's definitely a supporting role. Okay. Um, yeah, this, is a, this is about the, is is about the, the politics okay. of getting this passed. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. he's in the posters, too, which is why I said it makes it sound like it's like a, not well, a two-hander, but that he has it. He's the role. most significant yeah. supporting role, but right. it is still like his relevance is not about King's leading the movement. It's about King working working with the other members of the civil rights movement to get them on board with Johnson's plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, th th really I think this movie exists to sort of immortalize Cranston's performance, which yeah. was greatly acclaimed on Broadway, but it's more than that. I, and, and I'll tell you, I, you know, I, I always feel bad about this. I got about halfway through the first of the Robert Caro books and really enjoyed yeah, it, and right, then right. like somehow put it down and never got back to it. Like, I'm gonna 
<laughs> Go back to the Robert Caro LBJ books. There also there's an incredibly revealing moment in this, and I don't know how true it is. I know it's true in general that you know Vietnam happened under LBJ, and it's a it's a despicable part of his character, shameful part of his legacy, right? But he the movie presents it, and and I I, I, I my you know I don't know whether how true it is. He didn't care, like it happened because he didn't want to because Goldwater was going to hammer him as being soft on the Soviets, and then Vietnam could fall to the communists, and how horrible would that be? And the great line from LBJ is like, Jesus Christ, Democrats beat, beat Hitler and Tojo. What do we have to do <laughs> to prove that we can? But, um, but when the Gulf of Tonkin happens, and it happens in the middle of fighting for the Civil Rights Bill, he's like, yeah, okay, fine, we'll essentially. We'll pass a resolution. <laughs> right, we'll lie about it, we'll pass a resolution that passed like 98 to two, uh, ultimately. It's a lie, the Gulf of Tonkin. It was a we did, didn't happen, and that's what got us into this war. But Johnson's like, is he screaming to Humphrey, "Hey, who, who gives a shit about this? Whatever, let's get this done so they don't beat me on this. So Goldwater's and start World War III, and we can do the stuff that matters. We can pass the Civil Rights Act. We can pass the Voting Rights Act. We can pass the War on Poverty. We can have Medicare. We can Medicaid. We can change this country. Yeah, I'm not going to get bogged down in Vietnam. It's stupid. Like he did <laughs> not care. And then it became the defining foreign policy moment in the United States. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 this is also one of those movies where it's just sort of like all history repeats itself. And so yeah. there's, there's just, there's so many modern things that we're dealing with right now in this election and in politics in general that you can kind of point and go, oh, well, see, that's how that, you know. And, and you know, I don't know if so maybe, it's very may, may, maybe that was the tragedy and now we're in the farce or something. But, you know, yeah, history definitely repeats itself. So, what are your numbers? Um, I, some great racist performances, too. Some oh, of those Southern, Southern yeah. Ch as you play Jim Eastland and, and, and mm. Judge Smith, these horrible figures of American history in the U.S. Senate, and these guys give really. And I mean, that stuff's all in the transcripts, I'm yeah, sure, yeah, from right. the yeah. Senate floor. It's totally cringe inducing. Uh, so I numbers? gave it what eight, eight, and, and eight and a half. Yeah, I gave it. I gave it an, at eight point eight. And if nothing more than to watch, there's a you know how talk show hosts have the elevated chairs and look down. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnson had that mm -hmm. too, and you can see it in the photos. Like he would put people in a chair and then tower over them <laughs> from his seat. He'd put them on a couch, just like a talk show, like Letterman. It's literally. He's like four, Mr. Potter. He, right, he's three feet, he's three feet above every, exactly, right. He's three feet above everybody, and it's just, I mean, it's just so, and, and, and a couple of them, you know, from the Carroll books, we have his tapes, so we know mm. what he does, but he just, the way he lies to other politicians to get stuff done is if he's already talked to somebody. <laughs> he manipulates people into doing things so effectively, it's, it sounds that's good. great stuff, it's really right. worth watching. So their average is an 8.7. And, and on the tomato meter? It's at 88%, and, um, so the, I guess we're just going to keep airing it. Well, it's available. <laughs> and it's on HBO you can now watch and HBO now. Go. It's you available can, you can on watch demand it now. On, on HBO. Yeah. So I guess you should watch it. I should watch it too. Bye. You should. Mm.